Meet Dave. Dave is finding that at the end of the month, he has less ready cash. His transport costs are up, his food costs are up. Rising interest rates have added hundreds to Dave's mortgage payments every month. Dave hasn't had a pay rise in two years, but he's okay with that because Dave and his employer know that a recession is coming. So Dave feels lucky that he has a job. Now something's got to give. Dave needs to cut costs somewhere. So suddenly, that mobile plan starts feeling like a luxury. So Dave picks up the phone and he calls his mobile company. And here's the moment of truth. He wants to downgrade his plan. But is he going to have a good customer experience? Is the mobile company going to understand why Dave is calling? How long is Dave going to wait? Is Dave going to get put through to an agent right away? Or is he going to get put through to a chatbot to then get put in touch with an agent? Once he gets to that agent, is the agent going to understand Dave's problem? Is the agent going to be able to help Dave? Maybe suggest some alternative plans for Dave. This is where AI can help. So luckily, Dave gets put through to an agent right away, an agent that has done well in the past with customers like Dave who are calling to downgrade their plans. So she pulls up Dave's account. She sees that Dave is paying for international data that he doesn't need. She also suggests that Dave switches to another plan that is more affordable and that bundles up data and voice. She notices that Dave has been with a mobile company for many years. So she throws in a customer loyalty discount. They hang up. Dave is happy. He's paying less, but he still has a mobile plan that works for him. The agent's happy because she gets a kick out of making customers happy, and she's getting a commission. The agent's employer is happy because we all know it's cheaper to retain a customer than to acquire a new one. So this is a win-win-win situation that tells us two things. Firstly, going back to what Stu was talking about, when the economy is sinking, great customer experience is more important than ever. Companies that get it right will outdo those that don't. And secondly, a great customer experience, well, it's often a human experience. As a customer, when I have a problem, I want to speak to a person who understands my problem and is able to fix it. Now, we know that often contact center interactions don't feel that way. Yeah? When that human connection is not just right, it's not great for us as customers, but it's not great for the agents either. Yeah? Being a contact center agent is a tough job. So if, as an agent, I'm not in a position to help my customer, I'm even more stressed out. I may lose motivation. I may even consider quitting my job. Now, Dave's story is not an atypical one today. Rising inflation, rising interest rates are putting pressure on customers around the world. They're tightening their belts. So customer retention is even more of a challenge. And providing an exceptional customer experience is more important than ever. A recent study shows that nearly half of customers today would consider switching brands after only one negative customer service experience. Only one negative customer service experience. And investing in customer service doesn't need to be a defensive move for companies. Forrester reports that even a minor improvement in customer service leads 
to major increases in revenues in the tens of millions. Other studies show that customers who have a positive customer service experience, they stay loyal to a brand for five years longer than customers who don't. And these happy, loyal customers, guess what? They spend more. They spend, on average, 140% more. And they're cheaper to serve. Now, here's the catch. When cost pressures start coming in, there is a tendency to over-automate. Human interaction is expensive. So when budgets get tight, there's a tendency to deflect a lot of customer inquiries towards chatbots and self-service. Chatbots and self-service work, but they work better for relatively simple inquiries. When inquiries get more complex, like in Dave's case, customers almost always prefer to speak to a person. And not any person. They want to speak to that agent who can help them quickly and painlessly. And here's the thing. Those interactions over tricky problems, over complex issues, they're usually great opportunities for companies because they're high-value interactions. They're high-margin interactions. So how can a company make sure they're that they're delivering that successful human connection? How can a company make sure that they're putting the customer with a tricky problem in touch with the agent best place to help them? The answer is data and AI. Data helps us understand what makes each customer unique. AI will help us understand, for instance, what's the best channel for an interaction? Is it online? Is it messaging? Is it voice? AI also helps us identify who that best agent is for that interaction, based on how well an agent has done with similar inquiries in the past. And AI also helps us identify the offer, the best offer for that specific interaction. It's the best offer for the customer, but it's also an offer that agents have done well with in the past. Now, let's look a little bit closer at that agent-customer connection. Now, traditionally, call centers have functioned on a first-in, first-out routing system. That means that the caller who's been waiting the longest will be put in touch with the first available agent. You all know that sentence, right? You'll be put in touch with the first available agent. Well, that's regardless of fit. Today, data allows AI to reshape that routing and to reshape it in milliseconds. We call this AI pairing. So AI pairing changes the odds of delivering a good human connection. And therefore, it changes the outcome for customers, for agents, and for companies. And AI pairing puts agents in a position of success because they'll be put in touch with a customer they can help. Now, agents and customers, they don't see AI pairing is imperceptible to them. They just have better conversations. And those better conversations, they have measurable outcomes. Higher customer satisfaction, higher agent satisfaction, and higher revenues as well. On average, between 4 and 6% higher revenues. What's the impact of AI pairing on call center operations? Zero. 
AI pairing does not interfere with call center operations, not even with call center operations requirements, such as average wait time. By now, you're probably asking yourselves, what data goes into AI pairing? Data about, for instance, why a customer has called in the past. Data about how agents have performed with specific inquiries in the past. If we go back to Dave, AI pairing will consider why Dave has called in the past, what contracts Dave has, and it will consider data around how agents have performed with customers calling to downgrade. In Dave's case, this was about a telco company. But AI pairing applies to any company that is delivering a personalized customer experience in any sector. It can be telcos, of course, but also um, banking, healthcare, insurance companies, or even the hospitality industry we heard from our colleague before. I'll give you an example of where AI pairing worked. So last year, VMO2 was deploying AI pairing across four queues, retention, care, upgrades, and movers. AI pairing powered 7.7 million conversations at VMO2. And VMO2 saw 8% more revenue per call thanks to AI pairing. Now we heard a bit about responsible AI. If your company is deploying AI, any company that is deploying AI or developing AI solutions needs to put very strong guardrails around it to protect its customers, its employees, and themselves. Starts with the basic, of course, not using sensitive data on gender, race, national origin, religious beliefs, but it's going beyond that that matters as well, right? It's creating a culture of responsible AI throughout a company. And that starts with committing to these three principles, fairness, transparency, and explainability. Fairness means being proactive, proactive about monitoring AI models to identify if they're developing any sort of bias or discrimination. And when we see it, we stop it. Transparency means being able to see the data and the processes that go into AI models. But it's not enough to see. Companies need to be able to explain because understanding those processes is as important as seeing the data and the processes. Now, these three principles need to be documented, of course, but they also need to be embedded throughout a company. And committing to them is not just the responsibility of a leadership team. It's everybody's responsibility. Everybody in a company needs to be living and breathing responsible innovation. But we're human, right? So we're a little bit fallible. And so companies that develop AI solutions, they need to embed these principles in the product by design so that the AI solutions themselves can provide additional guardrails against human failability. Now, if there's one thing that I'd like you to walk away with today is that when used responsibly, AI is not technology that replaces humans. When used responsibly, AI can actually generate richer human experiences. It was the case for Dave. It was the case for the agent who helped Dave. And I hope that it can be the case for all of us. 
Well, thank you very much. I look forward to meeting a lot of you today at Disrupt.